Hi, my name is Cicely, and my story is kind of crazy. I still can't believe that this actually happened to me. Let me tell you how I became the most popular girl at school, because I was the only girl at school. Growing up, I was not a very nice girl. I constantly got in trouble and refused to listen to what my parents told me to do. Mom and dad weren't too happy about me, and they tried everything to set me straight. I can tell you right now that nothing worked. I would get suspended at school constantly. It was a mess. Looking back, I understand that I should have acted differently. Back then, though, I thought I was so cool for acting up the way I did. Worse still, when I entered high school, I began hanging out with the wrong crowd. I still don't understand how I got tangled up with them. I went to public school since my parents couldn't afford a fancy private institution, so there were all kinds of teenagers there. The nice kids, the hardworking kids, the rebellious kids. You know, all the cliques that you can join. Well, I started hanging out with a really bad group. They skipped class all the time, spoke back to the teachers, and they were always getting in trouble. Really, I think at least one of them was sent to the principal's office almost daily. They had a terrible reputation at school, and they had really earned it. I thought they were so cool. Of course, I was wrong, but when I was younger, it seemed like a fun way to act. So I began trying so hard to be just like them. I dressed like they did and started rebelling against everything and anything. My parents, teachers, authorities, whatever I could protest against, I did it. If my parents wanted me to eat all the meat on my plate, I said I was a vegetarian. If I did poorly at school, I claimed I was making a stand against the system. The worst part is that I loved studying and often knew the right answers during the exams, but I didn't want my friends to think that I was a nerd, so I failed on purpose. My parents were in way over their heads, and they didn't know what to do about me any longer. They were really worried that I was throwing my life away, and I wouldn't be able to pick up the parts later on. When I finally grew up, I would be haunted by my past behavior, and it would be too late to change it. So they began searching for options. What could they do to make me understand I was making a big mistake, or at least to finally set me straight? That was when my Uncle Lawrence came into the picture. Lawrence is terrific, but back then, I thought he was so annoying. He was serious and worked so hard, and to me, that was lame. I now understand that he loves his job, and more importantly, he loves to help people out, especially his family. That was why he decided to talk to my parents and try to find a way to lead me down the right path once and for all. Lawrence ran a very prestigious school, and he wanted me to go there, free of charge. It meant that I could be a student at a really strict and prestigious institute, and my parents wouldn't be limited by their income. The only problem was, his school only admitted boys, and I was very much so a girl. I loved wearing short dresses and kept my hair long, so it was impossible to hide that fact even for a minute. So he decided to find a loophole to allow me to apply. He changed the rules for just a year and allowed girls to be admitted as an exception, but didn't denounce it anywhere. So the only ones who knew this happened were my mom and dad. I got a scholarship thanks to my uncle's influence with the school's board of directors, and he even paid for my uniform. Of course, I didn't want to wear it, and I got into a nasty argument with mom and dad about it. They finally got their way, and I left for school with my uniform on. I was super annoyed and ready to rebel that very same day with every teacher who talked to me. Much to my surprise, the school was really nice. The hallways were big and beautiful, and the classrooms were huge, and the size of my locker, it was amazing. Perhaps it wasn't so bad after all, I thought to myself. And then I began looking around and noticed that all the guys were so cute. I was amazed. Even better, all of them seemed stunned to see me there. I loved the attention and shortened my skirt a bit to highlight my long legs. Of course, that only made them stare at me all the more. I loved every second of it. The moment the lunch break arrived, they all rushed to me and offered to pay for my meal. In fact, as long as I studied there, I never once had to pay for anything I decided to eat or drink. Guys would always buy yummy lunches as well as snacks for me. They would lavish me with attention and wanted so badly for me to pay attention to them. They were really not used to having a girl around so often. Sure, they got to hang out with women when they left school, but for most of their days, they were locked up with other guys. So I was really a novelty and everyone in my class wanted to date me. 
Of course, I said yes, often. I was treated like a princess and always pampered by my dates. Guys would try to outdo each other and bought me all kinds of beautiful gifts. I accepted them all graciously and flirted back every single time. The problem was, I liked so many of them. I couldn't make up my mind. So I tried to push my luck and ask the guys who asked me out on dates if they would mind sharing me. Much to my surprise, most of them said yes. The ones who said no, I just dumped. It wasn't a nice thing to do, but I had so many options back then that I didn't really mind if they didn't want to speak with me any longer. After a while, though, even those who weren't sure if they wanted me dating other guys asked me for a second chance. After all, I was the only girl around, and so I had all the winning cards. At first, dating so many guys at the same time was so much fun. I got to go out for dinner every single night, I never paid for anything, and I got lots of gifts. I enjoyed myself and got to be with some incredibly hot boys. The problem was, after a while, I just wanted some time for myself. I wished I could stay in and study or rest a few days a week, but I was so busy with the constant dates I was asked on. Also, I began realizing that some of the guys who had been friends for years were starting to fight and argue constantly. I felt terrible about this. They were all so lovely, and I didn't want to be the reason why their friendship ended. It got so bad that my uncle, Lawrence, ended up calling me to his office. He asked me why there was so much tension in my classroom, and I finally broke into tears. I confessed that I didn't know how to stop the problems I had started and that I was really happy at this school. I didn't want to mess up again as I had in my previous class. I didn't know what to do since I didn't want to break up with my boyfriends and have them all hate me. So my uncle asked me if I was really trying to change and be a better person. I said I was and promised I would work much harder on my studies if he helped me out. Lawrence had a brilliant idea, and he prohibited dating between students. That helped me out so much. I couldn't go out with any of them without breaking the rules and had the perfect excuse to say no without them getting mad at me. Everything seemed to be fine, until I began having morning sickness. Mom took me to the doctor, and to our shock, we discovered that I was pregnant. Mom demanded to know who the father was, but I didn't know. I was devastated and apologized profusely for acting the way I had. I explained that I knew I had messed up and I shouldn't have let the situation get so messed up. Mom was mad at me, of course. Still, she was relieved that I was finally changing my ways and taking responsibility for my actions. My parents ended up helping me deal with my pregnancy, and they really were lifesavers. I couldn't have done it without them. I still don't know who the father of my child is, but I don't care any longer. One of the guys who had taken me out, Ryan, wasn't dissuaded by the no dating rule. He kept asking me to go out with him again and again. He explained that he really was in love with me and that I wasn't a silly fling to him. Even when I explained that I was pregnant, he still insisted that he wanted to be my boyfriend. I was so surprised. We began dating in secret so my uncle wouldn't get mad and suspend us. After a while, though, when we were really sure our relationship was serious, we ended up coming clean. My uncle accepted us dating as long as I didn't keep going out with any of the other guys. Ryan was so amazing to the baby and me. He is the sweetest guy in the world, and he loves me for who I am. That is so rare in a guy. I'm studying hard to graduate from college, and Ryan helps me study and babysits my kid often so that I'm not so stressed out. The baby could honestly be his biologically, but we don't want to do a test. He told me he loves my baby and that he'll be there for us no matter what. I think that he is going to propose tonight. He's been like a father to my baby and I can't imagine being with anyone else. I fell utterly in love with him and I can already see us spending our entire lives together and giving my baby lots of brothers and sisters. Ryan also helped me put my life back together and he's always been there for me when I need him. My parents and Uncle Lawrence adore him. I know they'll approve of us getting married. Thank you for watching.